Every meal my family eats this week is gonna be from a cookbook that one of you recommended. Cheers. Let's see how that goes. Mm. That's a banger of a soup. If my kids don't like it, I'm kicking them out of the house. So for dinner, we're gonna make this fresh falafel and tzatziki bowl. Did I say it right? Tzatziki? Tzatziki? Tzatziki. Tzatziki. Hey, I'm Jeremy and welcome to the channel. Here we focus primarily on whole food, plant-based, vegan foods and whatnot. First off, I wanna say a huge thank you. The channel recently hit 2,000 subscribers, which is so lovely. So thank you if you're one of them. If not, now's a great time to hit that subscribe button and join the family, the team. I don't know what to call you people. You're lovely human beings who are watching content. Thank you for that. I thought it'd be fun to do a video where I'm making recipes from a cookbook that one of you recommended. A little while back, I did a video where I cooked only from a book that I found on the street. And some of you made some recommendations on cookbooks that they'd like to see me do similar videos of. So this is one of them. I'm using a cookbook called The Plant-Based Cookbook. So I'm looking forward to taking that for a spin and letting you know how I and my family react to it. If you follow this channel before, you know that my kids do not sugarcoat it when they don't like something that I make. Oh my God. It's almost like all of my fat. It's like playing Russian roulette with dinner. So stick around to see how we feel about this cookbook as we take it for a test run. It is a sloppy, sloppy mess right now. I will burn. burnt. If you have any cookbooks that you'd like to see me do a similar video with, let me know in the comments below, because clearly, I do this sort of thing. On to the food. For dinner, we're gonna make this warm harvest salad with walnut dressing. The only big difference is I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna add some protein to it, because we're gonna make it into a dinner salad. So I'm gonna add some chickpeas, I think. Chickpeas, Annie? Okay, and I might throw in some beets in here too because I cooked some beets that we had left over yesterday and they need a home. So I think they're gonna find themselves in this salad. Otherwise, uh, I'm gonna make it pretty much as is. We're all such great claws. Such great claws. My wife's just down there talking to our cloths. Don't mind her. Um, we have such great claws. They need positive reinforcement from time to time. Our cloth doesn't. This walnut dressing is pretty stellar, but it has like a nuttiness and this fattiness, but it doesn't like, it doesn't taste like walnuts in the way that it's like overpowering, but it makes it like an earthier kind of dressing, which I think is gonna be banging. What do you think Annie's gonna like it? You just never know. You really don't. You can make a meal for Annie three times and she loves it, it's her favorite meal, the first three times, and then she hates it. It's like playing Russian roulette with dinner. She likes to keep our lives exciting, interesting. She sure does. She That's... so boring without an email. You didn't like it, right? I want french fries. We're trying to come up with a new ranking system because this I is a new should... book. I this think it should be dish or miss. Dish, dish or, or miss. Hump or bump? <laughs> This meal gets four humps. One aggressive bump from Annie. <laughs> hit or miss, hit or miss. Hit or miss. It's really good. I like it. Hiss. 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 It's a hiss. It's a hiss. It's got a lot of textures and flavors. And hiss. I thought the sauce was not going to be a hit. So I'm really impressed by that. Amazing. Annie likes it. I love it. Yeah. If nothing else, I'm going to steal this dressing and use it more often. So I'm going to make this chocolate cake for dessert. What's really cool about this book, as opposed to the last one I did that I found in the ditch, is that I think it's whole food plant-based and largely gluten-free, if not completely. So I don't know how much swaps I have to do at all, really. Just looking through this, they're using psyllium husk, which is cool. I used that recently for something else. Um, cinnamon buns. It made a huge difference just in the texture of the final dish. This calls for a lot of sugar, a cup and a half. I'm gonna cut that in half at least, maybe down to a third. Uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. Huh. 
huh, black beans in the icing. I've never made icing with black beans before. So that is gonna be interesting. Let's see how it turns out. Ooh, that looks good. Tried it. This is our couch potato table party. It tastes like chocolate. It tastes like chocolate? <laughs> you should review food per professionally. Gosh, gosh. It tastes like a brownie. More icing. Well, I was already done. More icing? I put a ton of icing on. More. Yeah. More. That's More icing? That's the best part. It's soft and it's rich chocolate. Dark, dark chocolate cake. It's surprisingly delicious. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. But how oh, happy it is. Ooh, it definitely doesn't feel like a not gluten-free cake, but it has a different kind of texture for a gluten-free cake. What about, is it hit or miss? Hit. It's a hit. It's a bunch of wonderland. You know, I've been waiting 20 minutes to eat this. I was hoping it would be good. If it wasn't, I would have killed somebody. No more desserts for you. Mm. For breakfast, I'm gonna make with this recipe book called the Banana Raspberry Breakfast Bake, but we don't have raspberries, we have blueberries. So I'm gonna use that. Again with the psyllium husk, she loves this stuff. I guess she uses it as like a filler, like a binder. And it was in that cake that we had last night, which I like that cake, but I didn't love that cake. Yeah. We're gonna play with it tonight and do something different with it. Wooly had an idea. So it's in the oven. I'm mildly skeptical of how this is gonna turn out because it is a sloppy, sloppy mess right now. And I don't foresee that thing picking up. But uh, I'm gonna trust the recipe. And make caramel sauce, and then uh, we'll see what's what. There's the sauce. So just like I was worried about, this thing is wet still. It's been in for an hour, but it doesn't look anything like the photo. Here's the photo from the thing. Uh, it does not look like this at all. Few moments later. Uh, it looks really good. And it thickens up. I think you just need to let it sit. Oh. Oh yeah, that smells good. Mmm. Very good. It's very creamy, nice flavor. Nice breakfasty sweetness, but not too sweet. Nutty. Don't like there's nuts. It's really good. And here's what I mean about nuts. Like there's a lot of texture in there, but I like it. That drizzle is fantastic. It made a ton of that drizzle, so we're gonna save that and use that throughout the week and other things. <laughs> My only complaint about this is that it just took forever to bake. And it did set. It set a lot better than I thought it would. That's the sauce. That's the berries and the textures. Hit. I'd say this is like uh, more or less a hit for us. And it was meaty, but we liked it. Right, Willie? Mm -hmm. So for dinner, we're gonna make this fresh falafel and tzatziki bowl. Did I say it right? Tzatziki? Tzatziki? Tzatziki. Tzatziki. I'm gonna make it pretty much as is. The only thing I'm gonna switch up is it calls for half a cup of walnuts, but I'm gonna use sunflower seeds instead so that Willie can take leftovers tomorrow to school. And it, it keeps on telling me, pulse this in the food processor, take it out, pulse the next thing, pulse the next thing. I'm literally gonna throw everything together and pulse it all at once because I'm kind of lazy that way. And also it's the food processor, it's gonna mash it all together anyway. Why should I uh, take that extra trouble of getting things in and out? I'm not gonna do that. So uh, I forgot to push the record button, but I just put a lot of stuff in here. Maybe you can see it in the sides, there's cucumbers. There's lemon juice, there's a garlic clove, there's maple syrup, there's nutritional yeast, onion powder, sea salt, water, dried dill. Now we're gonna grate it and mix in a, a cucumber that's been grated. All right, what'd you think of dinner, Annie? No. You didn't like it? 
Trash. Terrible. Terrible? Absolute bullshit. What do you like about it? I mean, it was okay, but the falafels were not good. I like the, I like the falafels had a different flavor than your other ones. What, what, I like this flavor what do you better. mean? I personally loved the the dinner. I thought the dressing was killer. I like the falafels. I guess it's uh, in the middle. Adults loved it, kids not so much. What was your idea how to make the cake less dense? And I really, really liked how that jam lifted up that cake. It made it less dense. And we had thinner slices too, so that's the way to do it. So if you watch this channel, you know that I have my own granola recipe, but I'm not against trying someone else's. What I like about this one is I don't have to get my food processor all messy and clean it all out. It's more or less whole food plant-based. It's using maple syrup instead of the dates. The only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have any dried fruit, but it says you can add in a cup and a half of dried fruit of your choice. So I'm gonna do that is the only thing I'm gonna shift in it. The big difference about cooking this granola that's different from mine is that it says it takes up to an hour uh, at the same temperature that mine is. And I can only imagine that's because there's more liquid like the applesauce and stuff. Let's see. This is definitely a quicker granola to put together, but longer to bake. So kind of a lateral move in terms of being a time saver. What do you think of the new granola? It's really delicious. What do you think of it compared to our usual granola? This is more flavor variety. You like it more? Well, I'm a little burnt. I cooked it. it These told... are like hard to rock. I, so to be fair, it says that you can add, break, add dried fruit to it, but that's not the recipe it gives you. So yeah. I think you should add the dry fruit after. I might just pick it yeah, out. Just cook it less. It called for me to cook it for another 15 minutes. Oh anyway, the crunchiness, I like, but Very you like crunchy. it? You like it better than my regular? I like it better. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna try it tomorrow with stuff on it. So for breakfast this morning, I just wanted to do something that would highlight that granola that I made yesterday. So I decided to make a smoothie bowl. I like my smoothie bowls to be really thick. So I just use as little non-dairy milk as possible chia seeds, protein powder, and a little bit of greens. Greens, this is gonna make it look like a gross color, but I don't care, because greens. Here's the thing about the greens as well. They don't always blend super well. Sometimes you get little bits of them. I don't really care. But one trick I've heard is you can just kind of pre-blend the milk and the greens together. I don't find it works that well, but let's try it today. You need a little more milk. And then about two cups of frozen fruit, whatever you want and then just blend them up and smash the hell out of them. Depending on your blender, you might have to scrape down the sides. And then I just topped it with hemp seeds and then that new granola. So let's see how it is. That's got a really great crunch. I still think I prefer my other granola, but I would make this one again. I would just adjust the cooking times because I think I overcooked it, which was undercooking it based on her directions. And I definitely wouldn't add my dried fruit in until the last baking cycle or just throw them in at the end and not bake them at all. But this is a solid granola. So for breakfast, I'm trying this raw buckwheat blended thing. That's not what it's called. <laughs> but it's a raw vegan breakfast. And so it's kind of like overnight oats, but with buckwheat. And then you grind it up into a porridgey type thing. I don't know, I'm making it for my wife and I. My kids were curious about it, but I don't think they really wanted to try it. Let's see what this is like in the morning. Oh yeah, it's slimy. Ugh. I mean, you just rinse the slime off. Ugh. Alright, so I've never ever made this before, so before I take it out of the blender, I need a little taste. That's not bad. You want to try this? I was going to be cold. Well, yeah, it, I'm going to put it in the fridge now. I think it would definitely be better cooler. This is not bad. I'm going to put it in the bowls and let it cool. And then you top it with like berries and whatever. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not bad? Yeah. It's a little gritty. Well, buckwheat is always gritty. Yeah. But I was surprised how smooth it was. Mm. So. It's good. It's pretty good. It's nice and creamy. 
If you wanted, you could put some more dates or maple syrup in here to sweeten it. But the texture is really nice. The consistency is nice. My question is, will this keep me full? Because the buckwheats <clears throat> have a lot of nutrient density in them, but because they've been processed and broken down, sometimes that can affect how fast they go through your system. This could be either a great breakfast that keeps me full all morning, or it could be like a calorie dosage where I need more later on. So uh, let's see how this goes. Much, much, much later. I was perfectly full all morning. Never had a moment where I'm like, I need hungry. I need hungry. I need hungry. That's not a thought I ever had. Super viable breakfast option for sure. I'm making a soup tonight for dinner. I'm making an Indian split pea soup. So I've got some split peas soaking as well. I'm gonna make the soup probably shortly this afternoon because it takes some time to sit. That's the only thing with that recipe is it's the kind of thing that if you weren't working from home or it wasn't the weekend, it might take some time to do. Gotta sit for like an hour and a half on the stove. Um, but maybe you can make this soup in the Instant Pot too, if you have one of those. Anyway, gonna make that. And then um, I might make a little bit of garlic bread to go along with it. I made some nice bread this morning. So, uh, see what's, see what's what with that. Maybe I'll roast some garlic. Let's try this soup. Yeah, I don't need to add any of that. That's really complex in flavors. It's delicious. That ginger isn't overpowering. All that other stuff like the garam masala, turmeric. That's a fucking banger of a soup. If my kids don't like it, I'm kicking them out of the house. They're gonna go live with you. Are you? Oh, actually, I. What do you like about it? You know what you need to with it? What? Non. Ooh, that'd be good with it. Yeah, you need to make your naan. What do you like about the flavors of the soup, Annie? I don't know. It just tastes like Indian food, and I love Indian food. <laughs> that slaps. Okay. It has a Swedish taste. I need some salt in it, though. A little bit of salt? Yeah, you can add some more salt. So now I'm soaking some walnuts and some dates, because I'm going to make those mint chocolate caramel chew things. Cheers. Think. Ooh, ha! It's a minty. Is it too minty? A little bit. It wasn't minty enough for me. I think it works. It's all right. I'd eat them. It's a himmet. You'd eat them, but you wouldn't ask for me to make them again. Yeah. I kind of love them. Given that they're only really sweetened with dates, I need to be right. And you see how kids who love candy, this might not be their thing, but I think for adults, it's kind of a banger. They're not smooth. They're a bit like chunky. Yeah, you like them? Yeah. But they're not school safe, I'm sorry. No, there's nuts in them. I can feel the nuts. <laughs> so it's the night before. You don't know what time it is. You're just watching a video in order. I'm making breakfast for us to have tomorrow morning. It's called a berry chia pudding and creamy oat parfait. Basically, it's like a chia pudding made from berries and overnight oat mixture. And then you layer them and you put more stuff on top. And my kids are gonna love it. Dig down though and get some of the other part. It's trapped. I'm trying. Yeah, it's good. Like peanut butter. Oats. Peanut butter oats. Yeah. And chia berry pudding. You could add whatever kind of nut butter you want. I went with peanut butter today. It's really good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like peanut butter. -y. That's it's good. Hard, like the berry stuff. Mm. Yeah. The chia pudding thing. Nice combination. Yeah, it's really good. Pet. 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 
Three hits all around? Okay, I'm gonna try mine later. Mmm. It's really bright and it pops from the berry mixture, but the oats are super creamy and delicious. I've often blended my overnight oats with bananas and it makes a huge difference. It's really, really nice. So I agree with my kids and my wife, huge keeper. This could likely become a weekday family staple because it's really easy to make in bulk and throw together in the morning. I'm gonna make like this Thai noodle soup kind of thing that she's got in this book that I think my wife is gonna go bonkers for. So I'm excited about that for dinner tonight. Cause it's a rainy crappy day and we just want comfort food. I think this is gonna be a woolly favorite. Try the broth. Ooh. So I could make this spicier for sure, but gosh darn, that's a good flavor. Gosh darn, that's a good one, Wooly. Mm -hmm. All right, let's eat. She says let's eat. I mean, she likes it. Kind of lemony, kind of curry-y. Is that a thing, curry-y? Curry-y. Curry -y. Yeah, I, I want a I soup ladle. Maybe <laughs> she's using a stir spoon. Okay, I'm just gonna have some soup. I'm just gonna scoop. I'm just gonna get some noodles. We're gonna be here for a while. I'm just gonna get some noodles. Oh, look at that. I got it all. Use a ladle and get some broth too. You're gonna take all the noodles. I think this would be a great soup if you have it cold. It's like got a nice kick to it. it feels cozy when it goes down. Mm. It's like a warm hug. Mm. The is really good. Look. This is a breakthrough. We might be able to start I using. I love nanoki. Inoki. Inoki. We might be able to start using mushrooms more in our cooking. Mm. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Mm. It's hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You like it? Mm. It's a hit. The soup is a hit. It's so good. I like the little tiny mushrooms. Nanoki. So I'm gonna make some pumpkin pie squares. I love so much that's in this recipe. I love that she's got almond extract in the, the batter or the crust, whatever you wanna call it. It's just little touches like that that let you know that she's this extra special kind of cook that just puts little flavor notes into things that you wouldn't expect. Uh, it's essentially pumpkin pie as like a tart kind of thing. So I'm excited, I'm a pumpkin pie guy. So let's see how this turns out. And I love like, there's not tons of sugar in here. I'm not changing a damn thing about this recipe. Do you like pumpkin pie? Not really. Well, there you go. Sure. Sure. You like pumpkin pie, right? Yeah. I'll make it like more up That's here. Good. On the cum cum sauce. Should be good Come with like a doll of a whipped cream on top of it. Yeah. Wait, you be how it Yeah, I don't. So it's like, you like it, but you don't love it. Mm -hmm. Come It'll be good with whipped cream latte. Just like pumpkin pie. It's really good. I'm a big pumpkin pie person though, so I love this. Like this is like, it's a nice smaller version of pumpkin pie. Everyone likes it now. Thanks for joining myself and my video on this little adventure. If there's any cookbooks you'd like to see me do, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. And YouTube really thinks you would like this video from my channel. Yeah, that one's perfect for you. Give it a click. Do it. Do it now, clickety click. Clickety click. Bro, clickety, what am I doing? What am I doing with myself? Bye.